Hi everyone, I'm Joel Marcy, a developer advocate at Facebook. So I'm here doing an AMA, or Ask Me Anything, and I've received some great questions to talk about today. But before I get started, I want to acknowledge the really unique times we find ourselves in, with the world a bit turned on its head, so to speak. Firstly, my best wishes to everyone during this time. I hope everyone watching is healthy and safe. And I wanted to give a shout out to all of the nurses, doctors, and medical professionals on the front lines helping those that are sick, putting their own lives at risk. They are heroes, all of them. As is the case for many, I'm working from home, recording this from my office. Our team plans to provide a lot of online content, video, audio, and written. Um, Led by my colleague, Cammy Williams, we are pivoting our media program to hopefully provide both useful and fun information. And I hope we can add a bit of levity to what otherwise are pretty stressful times. So with that, let's get started. First question is, how did I get into developer advocacy? Well, okay, so being a DA is, relatively, is a relatively new path for me, given how long I've been in the industry. It all started when I joined Facebook. Um, I came in as a technical writing contractor in 2013 to help document and launch a programming language they were developing called Hack. It was apparent during those two years that I was doing more than just technical writing. I was helping formulate an open source strategy, writing code and writing tools to support both Hack and its runtime HHVM. When I joined full-time at Facebook in 2015, my title was documentation engineer. So I was writing, of course, and I even helped form an official documentation engineering team within the company. But I was still very engaged in advocacy type work on the open source side. I officially switched to becoming a developer advocate in 2017 and joined the Facebook open source um, team to manage the overall open source program there. Uh, next question, uh, what considerations do you make when deciding to open source an internal tool or library and what process do you follow from inception to finish? So the open source team at Facebook is relatively small. We don't create most of the projects that are available to the community. Um, engineers, developers, and others outside our team working on projects, they internally decide that they want to open source their work. So generally a lot of the code is already written. And so in order to open source the project, we have what we hope is a fairly lightweight process to follow. We ask a series of questions about the project, how it will be supported, the community expectations, et cetera. As needed, we may get some legal or communication approvals as well. And then we decide if the project is like a research project or an experimental project or one that is more production related. And that determines which GitHub org the project will be placed. Um, we create the repo and then the project owners have a series of checkup items to follow before we make it public. You know, those checkup items can include like appropriate license, code license headers, readmes, and those sorts of things. So these have to pass, those checkup items have to pass before we flip the switch to make the repo public. Um, finally, a project can go live, um, potentially with some supporting tweets, blog posts, etc., depending on the project in question. Next is, um, how does Facebook support open source projects? So the open source team at Facebook consists of two kind of sister teams. There's a developer advocacy team and a software engineering team. The software engineering team focuses on open source tooling to help support open source projects efficiently and easily. For example, if the source of truth of the code is internal, we have a tool called ShipIt that allows for almost instantaneous syncing with GitHub. We expose various GitHub and CI settings that allow project owners to turn things on with the flip of a switch. Um, now, of course, tooling can only go so far and it is on both our team and the project owners to make sure we actively engage with the project from answering issues, reviewing, um, reviewing pull requests, etc. So next question is, is developer advocacy more about empowering developers to use the open source tools that Facebook develops or empowering them to contribute to improving these tools? So that's a very good question. And I 
think the answer is both, but I'd like to try to tackle that question from another direction. So developer advocacy to me is being an advocate for developers, pretty simple. And so we need to understand their needs and frustrations, and we need to see if either we have a project or a set of projects that could alleviate those, or if we don't, we wanna bring those concerns back to the team internally to see if we could in the future solve those problems. So in that case, that is a form of trying to empower developers to use Facebook's open source projects. So that said, as a developer advocate, I would have no qualms in recommending a project outside of Facebook if it met the needs of, of, of a developer. Now, regarding empowering developers, developer advocacy is definitely all about that too, from appropriate licenses to great documentation, particularly around how to contribute. We really want our open source projects to be community available and in many cases, community driven. Next question, um, what is your top objective for DocuSaurus? So um, DocuSaurus is a project that actually was born directly out of the Facebook open source program. We wanted a way to allow our projects to easily spin up a website for documentation that also allows for a consistent UX across those projects with common features like search and versioning um, and also making sure that the websites themselves are easily updatable. Mm -hmm. So simply put, we want DocuSaurus to be a go-to choice for open source projects when they are thinking about a web presence and documentation. Now with version two of DocuSaurus on the horizon, I believe that objective is still generally the same, but maybe with a small twist. Um, th that small twist is extensibility. We still want it to be super easy to spin up a site for your project, still providing those common features out of the box that I mentioned before. But we want to now allow folks to plug in their own functionality easily as well. And finally, um, final question, as a developer advocate, do you think it's appropriate to call your younger brother out in his little league baseball game when he was clearly safe, asking for a friend? So D Marcy on Twitter asked this, and I'm so glad he did. Um, so the year was circa 1998 or so. Um, my younger brother, Derek, is playing little league baseball in North Carolina. I was asked to be the second base umpire in his game. And Derek made to, makes a run towards second base and I believe slides and the ball is in the second baseman's hands and tags him. There was a long pause as I make this decision and I finally call him out. Yeah, I know, I call my own little brother out, right? Outrage ensues in my family and on his team. How could I call Derek out on a play like that? And there were like chants of clearly safe and all these things erupting as well. Now I kind of remember the play like this. And I really sold it that I was thinking hard about it too, right? Even though he was definitely out. I didn't want to call my brother out. I wanted to find a way to call him safe, but integrity and nepotism avoidance won the day. So I did what I had to do, and it is one of those moments that still to this day gives me nightmares. And with that, I want to thank everyone for watching this AMA. Subscribe to our channel and be informed of future content, including more AMAs with other DAs on our team. And most importantly, stay safe, um, everyone out there, best of health, and we will continue to engage with you online. And until then, um, I'm out. Thanks.